Uh, good morning, as the Living Well Coordinator of Madison, my name is Cheyenne Stevens, and I'd like to introduce Christy LeBlanc and Joe Curtis. Could you both introduce yourself for me? Sure. Good morning. I'm Christy LeBlanc. I am the Assistant Director at Somerset Public Health in Skowhegan. I oversee the physical activity and nutrition programs, which include the Move More Kids program, the Let's Go 5210 program, and the Maine Snap Ed program. So good morning, I'm Cheryl Curtis, and I'm a Maine SNAP Ed Nutrition Educator at, at Somerset Public Health. So the Maine SNAP Ed um, program is a USDA funded grant, and it's administered to by um, the Maine DHHS office, and it's implemented by uh, University of New England, and they contract out with um, different community health organizations within the state, us being Somerset Public Health. Could you both tell me a little more about how you both work with SNAP? So um, I am a SNAP um, educator and um, I'm out in our county. We work all over our county and um, we are in the schools uh, bringing fruits and veggies to little kids to taste and, and try. And we're also in the middle schools and high schools and then summertime, we're usually with our adult population doing different cooking classes. And my role in SNAP is to support our staff. Uh, we have 2.6 FTEs, so we have three folks who work on Maine SNAP Ed, and so my role is to support them administratively. Can you tell me a little bit about the other programs that you work with, Christy? Sure. Uh, so the Move More Kids program is 100% uh, funded through the New Balance Foundation. Um, they love to give back to the communities where their employees live. And so we provide funding, resources, and support to 28 schools, um, school districts uh, from Fairfield, MSA Day 49, all the way up to Jackman. So regionally or geographically, we have a very large area to cover. What opportunities is there in Madison for people to be active? Sure, so I can give you a few. Um, so Weston Woods um, has a beautiful trail along the Kennebec River, which also goes out behind the Noise Farm. Um, lots and lots of miles of um, hiking, um, biking, snowshoeing, um, absolutely beautiful. You can start right at the boat landing and connect to the trail. Um, and so that is an opportunity. Um, what many folks might not be aware of is the Move More Kids funded a nine hole disc golf course behind the Madison High School. Um, it is a very nice course, um, very well marked and laid out. Um, you just bring your own disc and your own equipment and you're able to use that. Um, during this time, I would certainly contact the superintendent's office to see if it's available to be used by the public. Um, but other than that, is it is for school and community. Uh, Preble Avenue Fields has wonderful walking trails, um, both along the um, softball, baseball, and football fields, as well as there are some trails um, in, in the woods around the perimeter of the, of the um, fields. Um, let's see, there is access to 10 spin, uh, spinning bikes at the Madison High School, and I offer classes for both youth and adults, um, typically on Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays at 5.30 a.m. and Saturdays at 6.30. Um, and so that is available and open to the, to the public um, once we're able to access um, the school. So another opportunity um, for people to be involved in in our area is our um, Old Point Avenue Community Garden, um, which sits on the site where the old playground was, and now it sits beside a beautiful new playground. Um, we have a greenhouse there. We've got five or six beds um, that have been created. And uh, I work with Julie Wallace um, at the high school and a couple of volunteers um, from the pantry. And we plant in the spring um, and it's just, it's beautiful now, um, beautifully growing and things are being harvested to the pantry. They can also be harvested to um, the community as well. So if there's anyone out in the community that would be interested in coming and weeding and, and just checking on things, it's much appreciated. Um, so we're outside right now um, at the community garden and I just wanted to show you uh, kind of what um, it's um, turned into since our four years started um, four years ago and um, just go ahead and take a look at 
some of the awesome um, vegetables growing. We are working with uh, Julie Wallace um, at Multiple Kennebec Multiple Pathways Academy in Madison. And in, in the summertime, she has her students uh, come work and they, they weed. Um, they just make sure everything is, is going well. We have two volunteers from the pantry themselves that have come and planted and they're here as well, watering and, and weeding. So most of the stuff here that's harvested is going back into the pantry, but anyone from the local community can come. So uh, four years ago, um, I was working with the town manager, uh, Tim Curtis, uh, in Madison, and he wrote um, a Move More Kids mini grant, and he wrote it twice, so we were able to acquire it two years in a row. Um, the, the grant monies went to to buy all the lumber and we had the boys and Girl Scouts come and build the gardens. Um, Joe Bergeron, Farmer Joe Bergeron from Jackman uh, was wonderful to donate our um, greenhouse structure and monies again went to cover it and put the wood on. I know Julie's got some wonderful ideas of how to make it um, work more efficiently and um, it's just been a wonderful collaborative effort and I think um, we're getting to the point where we're ready to rename the garden, maybe put that out to the schools and see if some of the kids can come up with a really clever name. One of the um, awesome uh, things I find is when I'm here at the garden, there's local students that live around the area and they come up, they remember Mrs. Curtis from school and they'll come up and talk to me and tell me all about the new fruits and vegetables that they're trying. So uh, it's, it's really, really good to have this in community. Do you have an average of about how many volunteers? So this is the first year we've actually um, had two volunteers that have come and donated their time uh, to tending to the garden. Um, they've done a fantastic job. They're extremely knowledgeable. Um, I I can't do this alone, and we're we're hoping that for the we're hoping for the sustainability of it. So more volunteers, the better it is. So this spring we started off with, because of COVID-19, we did have some college students that had some time on their hands and they came out and helped prepare the, the soil for uh, this springtime. Um, we've had Boys and Girl Scouts um, work and make markers uh, desi to designate what was what in the garden. Uh, we've had um, Skowhegan Agway donate some of the soil. We've had another farmer donate some soil. Uh, at Julie Wallace, again at the academy, she um, does hydroponics and so she brings a lot of her fish um, fertilizer to the garden. That's why it looks so great. So not only is it Julie Wallace, but it's also Mike Packard as well working with Julie Wallace that helps make this a wonderful place. And, and the kids come and they're learning great skills as well. So that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Really both do a lot. Um, I was wondering if you both could tell me a little bit about what you're doing now due to COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about what your days are like, what changes have been made, um, how anybody can get in contact with you versus how they normally would be able to. Okay, so we've been still working um, out in our community, but we've been working from home and uh, we had to um, try to figure out how we can still reach our um, population and we've gone to virtual store tours so that's one of the things we can offer to our um, adults and usually on Tuesdays and Thursdays um, at different times they just need to contact the office and sometimes we have it posted on Facebook or Instagram and they can just click in and sign up for it or just call the office um, as well and, and our administrator will take their information down and we'll contact them and it's all done by Zoom. Um, it's pretty simple, pretty easy. I know that you and I took um, the, yeah. the virtual store tour and, and at the end, um, everyone that takes it receives a $10 Hannaford gift card. Um, so that can help go stretch those dollars just a little bit further. How about you, Christy? Has anything changed for you? Uh, sure, yeah, so I spend a lot of time on Zoom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> lots of meetings virtually. Um, so this summer we would normally be working at uh, camps or within rec, um, uh, summer, you know, summer rec programs. We are working out at Camp Paduk um, with about 42 youth uh, the past two weeks. 
So that has been wonderful. Um, we're also promoting um, some of our local opportunities to be physically active out in Athens. There's the Farm to Farm 5K, of which I think last night they had their largest attendance ever. Um, yeah, which is wonderful. So that's a 5K that's offered every Tuesday evening during the summer. Um, and they have a Facebook page that you can find out more information and the details on that. Um, and then I have been um, partnering with the Carabec High School PE team, so Jack Kaplan and Judy Dumphy. And on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we've been offering a 5.30 a.m. Tabata class, ab workout, and uh, yoga workout. So that will continue until the end of August. Um, they receive a Zoom invitation every Monday and Wednesday evening. We have many of our high school athletes here in Madison uh, doing it, which is really nice. Uh, whether or not they want to be on camera or not, we can see that they're there and they can see us. And uh, we lead the, it's about an hour and 10 minutes. So if anybody wants more information on that, they can contact me for that. Another thing that we um, are starting next week is three different sites throughout um, our area. So. Um, We've got Anson, Skowhegan, and um, Harmony, and we're starting up our Cooking Matters for Adults classes. And uh, we, uh, anybody from anywhere can attend those classes. They just need to call in and sign up for them. They don't have to be from Anson or Harmony or Skowhegan, so anyone from Madison can call in and, and sign up for that class. And it's a six-week program, uh, two hours long um, each class, and we do a little nutrition education and we all cook um, a little bit of the meal together. We're going to start off with pizzas and make them individual. So um, we're going to do our best to honor the COVID-19 protocols. Um, but yeah, anybody can call into the office and register for that as well. What is the single most important thing to you when doing your job? Like what is your main focus that really drives you to continue what you're doing because both of you are obviously a good resource for this community and many others. So uh, as part of, uh, of our work, um, New Balance Foundation was able to provide us with um, a significant amount of funding to be able to support our communities. Um, we created an in-house, so in-house Somerset Public Health team of about five of us, of which Cheryl and I are on that team, um, to be able to assess the needs in our community related to COVID-19 and then provide resources and funding to be able to support the needs that we find. Um, what we found was that there was a lot of need around food security, and so that's where we put our focus. Um, and so I do have an infograph that I can share. Um, but over since uh, April 1st, uh, we've provided support to um, over 15,000 meals in Somerset County. Um, we have partnered with the Skowhegan Rotary um, to be able to purchase New Balance masks to be able to provide to community members, especially those who are in food service or preparing food. Um, I don't have it in front of me, but uh, let's see. We've also uh, partnered with Hudamaki, who's been a wonderful partner. They've provided boxes for us. They've provided um, dinner uh, plates for us. Uh, they've also made a um, separate donation, um, a very large donation of which went to KB Cap to purchase diapers and wipes to be able to provide to food cupboards um, in Somerset County so that families could have diapers. Um, and so it's just, it's been a wonderful, um, wonderful feeling, I think, but also just a wonderful collaborative between many partners that we hadn't necessarily worked with before. Uh, We've also, you can talk a little bit about the potatoes. potatoes yeah. <laughs> so um, I was fortunate to be a part of um, the Merry Meeting Gleaners um, network on the email. And um, Maine Public did an interview back in March with some farmers up in the in Urstic County. And they've had potatoes that were um, not going to be um, salvaged to various places, restaurants, schools, things like that. And so they were just going to end up having to turn them under. And <clears throat> the cleaning association that um, I was just privy um, with, uh, we actually were able to um, salvage uh, 40,000 pounds of potatoes and bring them down um, to uh, different places throughout Maine. So we at Somerset Public Health, um, we, we got 6,700 
pounds of potatoes just in our little local area and we worked with um, Dubois Construction Company Is that mm -hmm. yeah. and um, they were the ones that rescued it from um, Hampton and brought it over here to uh, uh, SCTC in Skowhegan and food pantries got it um, different community sites uh, it was just a wonderful, wonderful way to get food out to people, um, just to help with that security piece again. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you both would like to add? So I guess to answer your question, personally for me, um, over these last few months I've realized the importance of um, getting food to people mm -hmm. who need it. Um, and especially in our community, in Madison, um, it's amazing to see the, the teams of people rallying around our community and our uh, school families. Mm -hmm. um, I have worked very closely with Alvin Ziano, who personally um, drives out to 30 to 40 homes to provide uh, food boxes to families. I have watched MSAD 59 um, with, I think, just about every single one of their teacher and staff uh, pooling together in vans to provide food on Mondays and Wednesdays um, to all the kiddos. It's nice as I'm working on my Zoom calls from my dining uh, dining room table, I can look out the window and see the van drive by and just see um, they're eager to do that. And this isn't something that the school has typically done throughout the summer. Um, and other than last week, the 4th of July week, they um, are continuing that this summer or through the month of July which um, takes a lot of effort and energy and um, just organization to be able to do that. And so it's, um, I'm really proud of that. Um, and the other thing that I think is extremely important to me personally um, is the health of our kids. Um, and I understand um, the importance of physical activity and physical activity at a young age and finding something that you love um, and being able to continue to do that. I, I bike. And so I bike indoors and I bike outdoors and it was a love I've had since I was five years old. And so for me, um, I really try hard to educate kids on the importance of moving your body. And like Christy, um, food security uh, is really on my heart as well. And likewise, teaching, um, teaching them young um, that healthy food is good food. And um, I love it when we get in there into the schools and they can taste something that they've never tried before and they give me a wonderful thumbs up. Um, I love it when I can um, work with the, the older children and um, we make a meal together. They learn s different cooking skills. Um, most of the time uh, cooking uh, is a lost art in homes where it's just the prepackaged food that we get. So um, they can learn a new skill as well and see what they're capable of doing and that it tastes good and it's um, better for you and it's cheaper in the long run and that will that will over the years affect them um, when they get older um, health disparities um, can increase if if you're not all along you know watching what you eat being physically active things like that so it's the whole package and what's the best way to reach you both the best way to reach us would be to contact Somerset Public Health at 474-7473. Thank you both. Mm -hmm. Thank you.